Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cordum. We are back for some more Rogue Trader. In the previous episode, we finished the gutted void ship. We fought off some mutants here. Everybody is fine except for some minor traumas, let's say. <laughs> We're gonna go back to the void ship and we are going to make our way into footfall, I believe. I think that's where we wanted to go for J. Heydari celebration. Yes. Okay. So, Kronos expands map and keep making our way. And I do hope I have some combat encounters because I'm really looking forward to it. The vessels confessors report discontent among their flock. During the traditional sermon before departure, a ritual chandelier's hundred candles were snuffed out at once. The missionaries att attribute this incident to an open ventilation shaft, but the voidsmen noticed it and are whispering about an ill omen, fearing the woes that may soon come. We have Lord Imperium and we have Coercion. I guess I will go for Coercion. Organize punitive possessions against everyone faltering in their belief. Sure, nice, succeeded. A resounding condemnation of weakness of spirit and body led to arbitrary reprisals against anyone who dared even mention the troubles hanging over the crew. With the permission of the Confessors, the Voidsmen took the task of bolstering morale into their own hands and successfully quelled the rising panic. Oh, do I have something to do in Janus? And by the way, how are my colonies looking? Oh, they're complete. So... I still can't do this one because I don't have mechanisms. On Janus... Ah, right, I wanted to wait, and on Dar... What? Wait. On Dargonus, it's still ongoing, right? Executing, yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, I don't think I have any quests to do in um, Janus. Tenebris Aque, Odinathus Odin 11th. Oh, I have to go back to Dargonus for this as well. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, okay. A lot of stuff for Kyavagama. Oh, and I still have to go here, that's right. I haven't come here because the path is red. Or is this not even a, a, a course yet? Hmm, interesting. Wait, what am I doing? Oh, never mind, I have to go here first. During the warp voyage, the middle decks reported strange gatherings that were attracting dozens of officers. An investigation quickly bore fruit. One of the acolytes from the Augur deck has proclaimed himself a prophet and is rambling about purification by blessed fire. Only the perilous influence of the warp can explain the strange convictions and uncanny zeal of this person. So we have 74% here and 35% there. Dispose of the newly emerging prophet and ban the cult. Nice. The mysterious disappearance of the Prophet and more frequent inspections of decks and living quarters quickly put an end to the growing popularity of the sect. After a few days, the people who visited the gatherings preferred to simply put the episode behind them. <coughs> Let's end that. So I was talking about this one here. Because I can go there. Wait, how do I have... How do I have 22 navigators inside? Did I have this in the previous episode? I don't think I did. Was it because I saved the navigator from the... From the gutted void ship? That could be cool. Because I think I had like 11 or something. Demonic eyes had materialized and begun to slither across the walls of crew quarter 49. The burning orb swelled like bubbles of fetid swamp gas, only in secluded places at first, later appearing in plain sight. Everyone subject to their glare started experiencing headaches and spells of self-flagellation. After one of the officers peeled off a portion of his own skin to fashion a makeshift eyelid for one of the fiendish orbs, the section was quarantined since neither fire nor other munitions could prevent more eyes from sprouting up on the ship. The vessel was cleansed only by escaping from the clutching embrace of the Sea of Souls. By the God Emperor's grace, no perils of the war prevented the vessel from returning to real space. <coughs> Alright... And I had a ship battle, right, that I hadn't, that I wasn't able to beat. 
Where was it? I'm, I'm checking my notes. I did not write that down. Damn it. Okay. I think I'm gonna hunt for that ship battle again. Shireen, if you find the spare minute on... Bless you, Cordon Pina. <laughs> if you find the spare minute on Footfall when you are not deciding our lackluster feature, uh, fates, I would be delighted to see you at my Amari car in the Amasekas. I'll tell Octi to set aside some decent wine in case you decide to grace our humble party with your luminous presence. Amari car. Is that some kind of celebration? It is an occasion celebrated on my world, Efreet. If Oh, Efreet. I'm, I'm thinking about Baldur's Gate here. <laughs> it is the day when a person shows, by their actions, that they have reached maturity, that their spirit is ennobled. Among the Africian nobility, this day is considered more important than other symbolic events, such as the first cry or the day of repose. And by a wonderful coincidence, my Amarikar happens to fall on the day when I also wish to celebrate my acquisition of the Mercatum Tabula Officiale. Uh, it would be my pleasure. The lowly regulars of the Amasekas will be telling their great-grandchildren about the time they had the honor of witnessing your dazzling visit to that unworthy dive, Shireen. That is, of course, if they live long enough to see their great-grandchildren. Wonderful. Uh, oh, she doesn't... Okay, so we lose her from the party for now. Okay. We are going to find Lady J. Day, please. Okay, and we are already at the Amasekus. None shall stand in my way. I kind of hope there's a, a bar fight or something because I do want some action. <clears throat> Where is she? I won't tolerate weakness. Jay. The hell? What? Oh, is it like in the in the back rooms? Maybe. No, there's the dead guy T posing. Wonderful. This is Riza. Yo, what is Jay? What am I missing? Victory awaits. Oh, oh, there she is, okay. You easily spot Jay, well, not so easily, in the group crowded around the table. The extravagant luxury of her attire and her gleaming augment set her apart from the rest. Seeing you, she exclaims, May the gravitational wells on your worlds never lack for grip, just as my heart never lacks for joy at the sight of rogue trader Von Valencius. With an approving chuckle, Octaviana mutters, I can't believe, you actually roped the rogue trader into coming to your party. If the rogue trader raises a toast to your health, I'll start to believe you really are a princess, and not just a smuggler with the gift of the gab. Please take a seat, your lordship. Uh, sure, let's just join the group. I'll gladly accept your offer. <clears throat> Octaviana draws out a bottle from under the table. The glass is as thick as your finger and is covered with in wax seals. With no exaggeration, this is the finest amasect that has ever graced this bar. Jay personally acquired it, as she says, for a special occasion. It seems that you are the special occasion, your lordship. The crowd around the table falls silent, exchanging awkward looks. It would appear they are unaccustomed to drinking in the presence of lofty individuals such as you. Uh, Octaviana, you and Jay are friends? Octaviana offers you an arc smile. Friends? She is my worst enemy, the vengeful spirit of retribution sent to punish me for my youthful transgressions. Mr. Seidari has a special gift for knocking me off balance and dragging me into difficulty. I would have barred her from the Hamasakas long ago if it weren't for her habit of tossing money around like confetti and of paying triple for anything she breaks. Do see, Shireen, do you see the petty, miserly, callous, unforgiving friends the Exalted One has sent me? Uh, so, these are her associates? The precious roses in the garden of my soul and the golden little bees that, be, that bring honeyed riches to my treasure house. Yes, this is my crew of cold traders. The two identical ones are the trickster twins, my closest associates. Kor, our resident hothead, and his much wiser sister Tora. 
Don't let her fool you, your lordship. She's only calling us, calling us me, calling us me a precious rose because you're here. When it's just us, I'm lucky if I get that harsel with the gun. Cor chuckles good-naturedly. Because you are the hassle with the gun. If I dragged you out as many of as many scrapes as Jay has, that's not the name I'd be using for you. I can tell you that much. Cor's sister rolls her eyes. Pay no attention to his... Uh, to his... To this, your lordship? Uh, Cor has nobody to blame but himself for that nickname. Uh, let us drink to the Lady of the Hour, Jay Heidari. The assembled group bursts into approving cheers and the bar fills with the sound of clinking glasses. The Amasak takes tastes exorbitantly expensive, sweeping you into a kaleidoscope of flavors. Tart floral bitterness, honeyed sweetness, and then other, far more refined sensations that are nameless, owing to the small number who can afford to experience them. <laughs> Bravo, Octi! This Amasak will do me very well! Very well indeed. Jay's self-satisfied reply elicits general laughter and the tension at the table seems to loosen slightly. Oh, he's well armed. Who is this guy? A rival? Falco. Oh, I remember this name, I don't know from where. The man who has just approached the table is hideous by anyone's standards. A repulsive face, greasy hair and bulging veins at his temples. His attempt at an amiable smile is so transparently false and off-putting that your fingers itch to reach for your weapon. With a surprising look askance at you, he says. Mr. Seidari, allow me to wish you a happy Amarikar. Master Mercy could not let such an occasion go unmarked. He sends his warm wishes and a gift. And we got a noble-born mantle. Okay. Oh, Falco, I am much obliged, untouched by your presence. May the fire in your heart burn forever bright and hot like the stars of the Gramnor system. Tell Mercy that this show of his precious attention toward my humble self bought due to my eyes and a song to my heart. Yeah, let's whisper to Octaviana. Isn't Falco the one who stole Jay's cargo? And the very same. The greasy piece of grox shit, Octaviana says, wearing the sweetest, most amiable smile one could imagine. But the stars of the Gramnor system all died around a hundred thousand years ago, and the systems around them are a true breeding ground of death. Who is this Mercy? Some big mysterious figure in the mission. The Kasbalikas put him in here to keep a handle on things and to make sure the interests of the senior partners aren't forgotten. If anyone does become a little bit forgetful, Mercy comes alone, somebody dies, everyone else panics and empties their pockets. Falco and Mercy aren't officially connected. Falco's just another prosperous mission agent like Jay and other people. But Falco's happy to do Mercy's dirty work for him, and what? And that's why he gets prefer preferential treatment. Is it customary in the Kasbalika to attend the parties of people you have tried to ruin? After you got involved in their turf war, they all decided that the peaceful resolution would be for the best. This here is a symbolic confirmation of the ceasefire. Okay. <clears throat> Let's just say nothing. Sacrificing time you could have spent on business to come here for me is a priceless gift, Falco. I will not test your generos generosity any further. As Falco turns away from the table, you see a snarl of feral hatred twist his already repulsive features. Okay. Uh, what were you talking about before I arrived? Business. My dear Tora, whose mind never strays from the chilly peaks of the mountains of money she's made, was telling me the latest cold trade nudes. Exciting times are upon us. We're not the only ones being tested for weak spots. Vladaim set on putting the ultra requi the alt requisite re <laughs> the alt re requisitors requisitors out of business, and it looks like he's got Mercy's blessing to do it. The big beasts are picking off the small ones. I think things are only going to get more interesting from here on out. That means it's time for us to step up and become major players, eh? Cor wings at Jay. I know a couple of Chegnars from the Ultra Requisitioners. They're dry as you like. We could tell them to cool their heels with us, and they'll be more willing at the Ultra Halters. We could take on Falco and even blow Vladaim out of the headlock too. Cor, my sweet. Before you go chewing feist line with Chegnars, you need to clear the altar and hide the pulses. If Vladaim's playing all the lines, he won't touch me, but I don't want to shift the risk onto you. They're shattered about the commission. 
the conversation quickly turns into an impenetra impenetrable mishmash of terms from the secret argo of cold traders. Even foes are bowing down before Jay Heydari. That is something worth celebrating. And what better way to celebrate it with a game? With stakes, naturally. <laughs> Today is my Amari card and that's what I want. Jay draws a stack of carved plus steel tiles from her pocket. They are decorated with symbols and fine maglines. Holding the tiles in one hand and raising a glass with another, Jay asks. What do you think, Shireen? Does the rogue trader have anything he's willing to wager? You recognize the tiles in Jay's hand. It is a set for Tantolo, a game popular among gamblers. Each player is dealt several tiles, which can be arranged into a pattern of a specific value by carefully matching up the mag lines. Whoever has the highest value wins. Voidsman love playing Tantolo, which is usually won by luck or skill. I do not know the rules. It's easy. Every player is dealt a few tiles. The tiles are connected by mag lines, and there are lots of possible combinations. You arrange the tiles in a design that has a particular value, and whoever has the highest value wins. Talking a mile a minute about the rules and tile combinations, Jay definitely shuffles a stack of tiles. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna lose, but sure, I shall play. Watch out for his lordship, lads. He was awfully quick to agree just now. I have a sneaking suspicion about how the rogue trader acquired all his countless riches. But I'll warn you now. Playing for money is considered wrong on Ifrit, because gaming is tempting fate. So instead, we're going to play for wishes. Huh. A pile of tiles is placed in front of you and the other players. Logic. Ugh. Look at your hand. Wonderful. <laughs> you... Wait, what? What do you mean I failed? It passed. I rolled a 40. Game. Okay. Let's just continue. You try not to stare at your tiles too gormlessly, but you cannot work out if you have a decent hand or a terrible one. Glancing at her tiles and grinning, Jade declares resolutely, I'm going to show you my hand. The exalted one loves me today. And if one doesn't show one's hand, what then? Okay. Then you have a chance to bow out of the game without losing, but you can only do that before someone announces they're going to show their hand. So... No luck, I guess, because I couldn't even understand them? <laughs> Chuckling, Jay tosses her tiles onto a table. Her hand is significantly better than yours or anyone else's. And for my wish, I want everyone to drink to my good fortune. It has already granted me a gift fit for a queen. I'm talking about you, Shireen. May fortune continue to smile upon me. Everyone at the table eagerly raises their glasses. You join in before you even are aware you have done so. A new stack of tiles already waiting for you on the table. You realize that moments have skipped past without your knowing. It seems the Amasek is somewhat stronger than you thought. Okay, let's look at our new hand. Okay, this one we got it. Roll the one. <laughs> Now this one is definitely a good hand, one of the best you can get. When you look up, you see that everyone else apart from Jay has already tossed their tiles onto the table in disappointment. It's just as two left, Shireen. I'm going to show my hand. Read them and weep. The sight of your hand sets everyone at the table into a flurry of excitement. But then the chatter turns into a roar of triumph. Jay's hand is the most valuable in the game. Damn it. I win again. What should I wish of you, Shireen? Oh, I see. Uh... Okay, so given your profession, I would extract the promise of my assistance should you ever find yourself in trouble in the future. You promised to save me? What an exciting adventure that could turn out to be! It's almost worth getting into trouble for. I accept your stake. Tiles are dispersed around the table, forming piles in front of each player. You suddenly feel your body grow heavy. The treacherous Amasek is slowly robbing you of your clarity of thought and dexterity. Well, we have a good chance here. Let's look at our tiles. Your hand is not especially good or bad. It is the kind of hand played only by someone desperate who has nothing left to beat. Uh, to bet. Before anyone says they're showing their hand, I'm announcing a condition. Seeing as it's my Amari card today. The only stake I'll play for is a dance. Sure, so if I lose, I have to dance with her? That's fine. I'll play. 
Glancing at your hand, Jay discards her own tiles face down. Mine are worse. <laughs> okay, I see. Looks like you've won, Shireen. I'll be delighted to grant you a wish. The light plays on Jay's dark skin and glints off the silver dogmatic of her throat. Moving with the grace of a sand snake, she holds your gaze and smiles mischief mischievously. Her dark curls fall across her face and you see the saucy glint in her eyes through her alluring curtain of hair. Yeah, I don't really... I'm not interested in, in romance with her. So... This dance is called the Dance of the Captive Ravanian Rav Rav Girl. When the governor of Efreet, Selim Khan the Bright, crushed the Ravanian rebellion, the daughter of the rebel leader was brought to him, the beautiful Diana. She danced for him, telling him of the struggle of her proud people, and they snatched a weapon from a guard's hands and aimed it at Selim Khan. But the spark of love that had kindled between them that day stopped the feist line from igniting in the cartridge, and both Nayana and Selim Khan lived through that day, and then many more days which they spent together. Jay, you wouldn't be cheating by any chance. I mean, she just lost, right? So... I should take my leave. I, I don't really want to romance her, so... How fleeting are the moments of happiness, Shireen? Go! But know that you are always welcome at Jay Adari's table. Um... But... What happened? I guess we have to continue this? Change your mind then, Shireen. I dare ho to hope you've worked up a mighty thirst as well. Just say the word and the goblet of the finest one will appear in your hand. Okay, I guess I have to continue. Uh, okay. So my only chance is Jay, you wouldn't be cheating by any chance. How could you even suggest such a thing, Shireen? Has J.A. Dari really fallen so low that someone could think me capable of deceit? Jay brings her hand to her chest in a tragic gesture to the approving guffaws of her associates. Well, there's enough betting for me. My luck is very fickle today. Unlike Amasek, you can always trust Amasek. It always lies. Smiling sweetly, Jay presses your goblet into your hand. Her skin seems to glow from within, and the sparks of laughter in her eyes dance like flames. Through Amasek's deceit? May the deceived not live to regret it. Fog swaddles your mind in appealing ideas of other ways you could amuse yourself at this party. Surrendering to the maelstrom of chaotic, thought, chaotic, chaotic thoughts, you let the all-pervading merriment determine your fate. I hope I don't mess up Cassia's romance with this. I just wanted to finish the quest. I did not want to romance Jay. Please tell me I did not sleep with her. I am not interested. Oh my lord, come on man, why? Well, the quest completed. Thoughts tumble violently inside your head, periodically ricocheting off the inside of your skull and triggering bursts of piercing pain. Your tongue feels desiccated and shriveled in your mouth and it scrapes painfully against your teeth. Light. Light is the enemy. Self-awareness returns unbidden, bringing with it an, an inexplicable sense of awkwardness. Your beleaguered body violently protests against the very idea of getting out of your soft bed. You hear a soft sigh beside you. Looking over, you see dark hair fanned out across your pillow. Jay, who is cozied up next to you fast asleep, is fully dressed, just as you are. Okay, good. Or perhaps she's not asleep at all. Shireen, you certainly know how to have a good time. Uh, let's try to remember the end of the party. You struggle to piece together your fragmented memories of last night's carousing. For some reason, you can clearly recall the ingratiating looks of the wardens as they tried to persuade you to stop, the cries of the beggars to whom you gave an obscenely amount of alms, and the stamping of the servitor that you rode around the station to Jay's un unconcealed glee. Okay, how did, night how did the night end? I don't remember all of it, I think. I think we shot peop at some people, over their heads. Someone didn't offer us the required amount of respect. Then you said that flying a shuttle was easy and that you would bet your warrant that you could get us to the ship. God damn. We also stripped the man and burnt his clothes because the sight of them offended the exalted one. I can still smell the singed fibers now. And how did you end up in my chambers? 
I helped you get back to your quarters and I couldn't find the door to get out again. And you graciously gave up 35% of your bed for me. Yes, I think that's the number our haggling, our haggling ended on. You and I, uh, we did not fall into bed together just to sleep, did we? <laughs> Lapsing into quiet laughter, Jay replies gently. No, Shireen. Your conduct, your conduct was entirely becoming of a rogue trader. Okay, I think she's telling me that nothing happened. We need to make ourselves presentable? I'm sorry to say you're right, Shireen. No matter how soft the bed or how pleasant the company, there is a line we must not cross. And I am perilously close to doing exactly that by getting a couple of bottles of delicious medicine from, for our aching heads. Okay, so hopefully nothing happened here. <clears throat> and Cassia is not pissed off at me? One would hope. But yeah, so the quest is completed. That's all I wanted. I'm going to speak to Cassia and learn her reaction. And if something got messed up, I am going to quick load. <laughs> Words cannot describe how boring the bridge is without our stimulating conversations. Wait. We're going to talk about gifts. But I'll... Wait. I have enjoyed. Okay, wait. Because I gave her the gift, right? We even talked to her in front of her new library. Yes. Okay. So I wonder if this option is just weird. <laughs> uh, gifts? What do you mean? Okay. You do realize that I know who sent me the Immortalium. I see people's emotions in the vivid spectrum of hues surrounding their essence, Lord what? Captain. And I understand everything. However, I have enjoyed this little game. I hope you have too. Uh... It sounds like the sequence is broke. This guy's T posing as well. It sounds like there was kind of like a sequence break here because she gave me the gift, I gave her a gift, I kissed her hand, but now we're getting this dialogue which kind of like seems like I didn't give her the gift yet. Okay, so, uh, Lady Cassie, being near you has made me reckless, and thus I ask you to accept my heart and feeling as a gift equal to yours. A second later, an invisible force envelops you in a swirling torrent of emotions, and your heart skips every other beat, in time with the Lady Navigator's breathing. When Cassia's powers recede, the austere reserve on her face is replaced for the first time by passion. In her eyes, the curve of her lips, the slight tilt of her head. With a small nod and a smile on reddened lips, she holds out her hand, pale and trembling. Kiss her hand again. I did not hear. I did not dare hope. I, uh, by your leave, Lord Captain, I would like to spend some time alone and think about what has transpired. <clears throat> I don't remember if this is what she said the other time that I kissed her hand. I hope I didn't break any kind of <laughs> words cannot describe quest or romance. I haven't. She has nothing to say about Jay, so I'm s simply going to continue. There's a cutscene happening, I think. The fog of war is covering the screen. Uh... What just happened? <laughs> I haven't. I. I don't know what just happened. Okay. No idea what that was. 
I was moving towards the bridge <clears throat> and the game entered the cutscene and moved me close to Cassia. Still can't go here. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna look for... Man, I don't remember. I don't remember where those ships were. This is safe anyway. I don't think it should be here. Yep. Uh, wait. Wait, have I not done this yet? There's a treasure here or a trophy. Okay. I'm going to assume that that's done and the game is just buggy in that sense. Okay, so we can... It's the same thing. So go there. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna start skipping these because it's just like a little bit of lore, it seems. Aviotas. And I'm trying to look for that ship battle. Drifting... Okay, we've done this. It's not here. So, from here, I want to move to Trinitos, so it's safer to come here first. And then we're gonna go there. Oh. In the middle of a warp jump, our sensor detected an approaching void ship similar to ours in size, but of greater tonnage. The unidentified vessel did not respond to our hails and kept its course, approaching us to high speed. Uh, I mean, it's kind of messed up to kill them. I don't even know if they're a friend or foe, but I'm just going for passing the check here. So, ballistic skill. We failed. Come on, man. A hastily launched shell only glanced the unidentified vessel, which continued to bear down upon us. When we collided, our whole ship juddered, but nothing else happened after that. No damage, no system failures, only a few casualties caused by heart attacks. The mysterious ship disappeared from our augers. Okay, I think it's just a chance to get some experience by doing those checks. Is it here that I have the ship battle? Haha, <laughs> it is. Let me quick save this. Now, do I already have my ship friend maybe i do because i got this right now lord captain we have received a report from dargonus some common folk from the now ruined scipione 84249 have succumbed to the heresy of defiance forming into engine vandals gangs they now ride among the wasteland on the wasteland adapted cleaning goliaths they have declared themselves outside of the law raiding the hives outskirts only to escape retribution in the toxic wastelands Many of them did not want to obey your, uh, your more? You? I guess you? Did not want to obey you more than equitable decision... Oh no, your more than equitable decision to send them the, to the restoration site of Scipione, and thus they have fled the labor settlements, committing the heresy of disobedience. Rumor has it that the Brigadier clan, in charge of debris removal in the ruins of Scipione, keep in contact. We could pass on our words to renegades via the brigadiers, or force them to disclose the location of the rebels' nomadic camps. What is this brigadier clan? This is a union of the workers and the technomats who have been working on the lower levels of Scipione. Small-scale bosses of the watches and the shifts, useful common folk who have proved their worth with diligent labor and valuable knowledge. Of course, they stand much lower than the esteemed trader, let alone the aristocrats, but the common folk heed their kin, and the brigadiers have both the authority and the ability to manage them. The Scipions keep themselves, but the brigadiers have not shown any signs of disloyalty. They were the first to volunteer to return to the ruins of Scipione 84249 and set up the debris removal project. They are certainly useful and are accustomed to praising the emperor through their labor. Moreover, their grief at the loss of their home and the resilience with which they have accepted it made them to appear like heroes and martyrs in the eyes of other commoners. Uh, how do they survive in the wastelands and why did they decline my rule? 
This is a rather uncomfortable way of life, your lordship. They must always be wary of acid rain and hurricanes, moving a decent distance from the hives if they do not plan on raiding at that moment. They get their food from the abandoned outposts, paying for it with the lives of those killed by autonomous security systems. Water and Promethium are rationed very strictly. They live by marauding, an occasional hunt and plundering, sometimes their own kin and sometimes the outskirts of the hives. They are a tribe of degenerates and barbarians that is rapidly, de rapidly developing its own clan culture. The civilized residents of the hives shoot the scum any chance they get. Okay, so now we have three options. We get mechanics, but we lose profit factor and complacency, and we get a wasteland generator. Torpedo tubes capable of firing five short burning plasma torpedoes with 19 damage warheads. All right. We have more security. <laughs> we get one movement point and lose complacency. This is actually cool. Or we get the Wasteland Twister, which doesn't seem particularly interesting. Uh, oh, sorry. And complacency and efficiency. But if we talk to our advisors, what we get? If the engine vandals have managed to tame the ancient machine spirits, then that means they are, there are technomats or even tech priests among their ranks. That renders, the, that renders them negotiable. It would be efficient to utilize such renegades instead of disposing of them. A promise of reward for every piece of technology found in the wastelands of Dargonus and returned back to the dynasty will ensure their obedience and tractability. If you wish to exterminate them, Ellen Tuck, do not waste your time on hunting them down. Instead, deceive them into defeating each other with the prize, a weapon or a trophy that they can fight for. After the Monkey are finished slicing each other up for the right to obtain it, your warriors shall finish the deed. This tactic proves itself to be very useful against your kind. That's true. The aristocrats of Dargonus despise them but are also secretly afraid of them, correct? Renegades that can invoke such fear. I wonder, if I had exiles like this in my home, would they have curbed the ambitions of my brothers and sisters? Would they have supported me in case of conflict? Oh, I am scheming and conspiring right now, am I not? Bravo, Lady Cassia. Do not be ashamed of the unique abilities bestowed upon you by your heritage. They are your birthright. Okay, so... Ah, so this changes, right? So here we get mechanisms and we still get the wisdom generator. Lady Cassia, we get security and we get the MP. Or we get the Wasteland, Wasteland Twister and Complacency. Now, <clears throat> I think there is something that I have right now that is dependent on having mechanisms. So I am actually going to lose one profit factor here to get these mechanisms. May the loss be found yet again. The former servants and serfs of the Omnicide that are now a part of the Engine Vandals were glad to actively collaborate and redeem themselves in the eyes of the Deus Mech Mechanicus. The common folk did not dare to judge this union, fearing the menacing priests clad in scarlet. Hive raids have become a rare occurrence. The expeditions are returning from the wastelands with relics that had once been lost to the vast plains, which make their way into the dynasty's vault via the Brigadier clan. Okay, cool. So now... Now we should have our escort ship. Nice. And we can pick another quest here. Complacency goes down, efficiency goes up, provisions go up. Or efficiency goes up. Sure. So now I have a friend, bitches. Let's fight. Let's duel. Because this fight, I, I lost this fight like three or four times in a row. So, I want to see if now, having some backup, if we are able to do it. Finally, some real action. <laughs> yeah, we have a friend. A, whoop, a sword class frigate. Man, they hurt a lot. Do not hurt Chauncey. No! You bitch. Okay. At least they're all attacking different sections ah, of the... Opportunity to exploit. Oh, we rammed the ship. They're all attacking different sections of the shields. What is this? Wait, what? The interior of this ship is on fire. The ship suffers damage each round. 
Oh, because they rammed it, I guess? Okay, so let's see. I would like to try and kill this guy. So if I move over here, I can use my macro battery on him. Fire right now. Wonderful. That's one down. Now, let's take care of this guy over here. And I'm also thinking about my torpedoes. Part of me is thinking if I should just have another lance weapon instead of the torpedoes, because sometimes they are rather inconvenient. Okay, let's, let's think about that later, I guess. So, I could... Uh, like, go over here. And do a lot of damage to him. Sure. Later. Yeah, go Chauncey. Fire the launch batteries. Uh huh. I'm stronger now, am I not? Yes. Bitches. Okay, and I'm gonna put some torpedoes over here, them. and I'm gonna restart my shields. Okay, came for me. Is he gonna ram? No. Wow, okay, that's very good damage. That is very good damage. Oh! Lovely torpedoes. Let's finish this fight. Hey! Another victory. Vengeance. Dynasty. We got Stygis Pattern Macro Battery, which is very good. Four shots dealing 21 de- oh, it's short range. This is also short range, so I think I'm fine with that. And we got Unholy Amulets, plus some scrap. What is this? Oh, the level up, okay. Alright, so let me look at my ship over here. We have another level. Uh, let me just pause to look over these and not waste time from the video. Okay, <laughs> I am back. There's a couple of things here that I think could be interesting. I'm mostly looking at the Arc Augury, which is... The flagship's next shot gains two extra range. There have been times where I'm fighting and I don't have enough range to hit. But it's like by one or two cells. And I think this can help out. And then I'm looking at these two here, which I'm not sure what I want. It's not bad either, this one here, to be honest. So this one reloads all macro cannons that were fired during the acceleration phase. And this phase is the initial phase of the ship's movement denoted by the area with the least amount of color. Certain mills can only be used... Okay. It says macro cannons. Generally mounted on the sides or the dorsal section. The dorsal cannon has long range, so it could be useful. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna go for this. And see, and see, oh, wait. This one and then... This one. Okay. This one is also cool. This one seems interesting, but I don't understand it. Overloads the shields to disrupt the enemy's defenses. If the enemy has shields, they are moved to the opposite side from where the attack hits. If the enemy has a hollow field, it loses several of its charges. The pulse can also negatively impact Xeno technology. It will expend 25% of the flagship's shields, though. Which is kind of upsetting to me. So I'll go for these ones here. Arc Augury and Expeditious Reload. I will also... What? Thank you. Uh... I will also... Change my components here. What did I get? Was it this one? Yeah, so short range broadside macro cannons, which fire four shots, doing 21 damage per shot. 
Yeah. So over these. Yes. 21 damage per shot, but only 3 shots. It's long range. Mazoa macro cannons. Short. Wait, I'm kind of confused. Uh, this is the Mazoa lance weapon. This is the dorsal cannon. 32 to 40. Yeah, I like mine better. And then I have these two. Okay, so this is fine. And let's also repair our ship. For 40 scrap. And we are done with this. <clears throat> well, at least our friendly ship took some hits for us. Which is nice. And now I want to explore this system here. So it's actually a good thing that I'm here. So... Since we have 22 points, I'm going to make this route unsafe. And travel there. Okay, chart new routes. We should have one for here. This is the Cradle of Kepri. I don't think I have, I have any quests for this, but... I do enjoy exploring. Destroyed ship. Really? Okay. What do you have? You have Xenotech. <clears throat> I have very little Xenotech, so I will want it. Oh, right. So the mechanisms... Give me a second. I had something that required mechanisms. It may have been a... A project. It was a project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so execute. Cool. I knew I had something that required mechanisms. Oh, this is done already? Okay, that was quick. Okay, so we got the whistle. Da -da. So, five. It says short burning. I don't know what short burning is different from the ones that I already have. And if this is complete... Oh, now we have a rank 3 as well. Ah, but this blocks the other projects. Man, replenishing frag grenades is not bad. It is not bad, especially if I go for grenadier as a feature. We get 6 mechanisms, 3 efficiency. Adeptus Arbitus. Boots of Victory. Whenever the weather become, performs a heroic act, they recover all their wounds and gain 2 AP more this turn. That's good. That is good. Player character gains the Bloody Underhive Leader feature. All allies gain 5% more melee damage and 20% damage to their attacks of opportunity. Not very relevant for me. I mean, it's good, but... I'm actually kind of leaning for this one. Because of the frag grenades. I will, I will give this one some time. And I think I'll just do... This one? Right? Because we have a lot of slots. Yeah. Uh, so... This one. And you... Oh, and you are ongoing, right? Yeah, ongoing. Okay. Uh, so this has been explored. I have Xenotech. <gasps> Another one! Archaeotech Mechanism Fragment. A surviving piece of an Archaeotech Mechanism of unknown purpose discovered among the wreckage of an ancient Imperial vessel on one of the planets in the cradle of Kerpi. I know I have another one. Uh Okay, I must have I'm ah here. So I guess we have we need four. Okay. Silence of Mer Segret and Cradle of Kerpi. Alright, last one. Let's 
no planet. Oh. Okay, so first of all, we have Promethium. This gives me five. I already have nine, but five is a good number, so yeah, take it. Distress signal, we have a, a an adventure here. Okay, let's see what we have. Sadly, I think if there's a fight here, I may have to sw um, leave it for the next episode. As much as I wanted some, some action... I think it's going to be too late in the video I'll to start one. To the stars. Such a peaceful scene, the likes of which I haven't seen in a long time. No bright flashes, no riot of colors, just pure white canvas. Oh, and before I forget, uh, we got something, right? This, this is an item? This is cargo, right? I think this should be cargo. We got the Nobleborn Mantle. While in combat, the wearer of this cloak gains a 15 bonus to fellowship whenever there are no enemies in the 4 cell radius. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Take that. You want to speak with me? No, she's just speaking. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, we've seen this. Follow my lead. Two skeletons are lying in strange positions, as if one was either carrying or hugging the other and did not let go even in death. Their gear is, get is badly damaged and decayed. Carefully inspect the skeletons and their gear. There are three things worthy of note. Fragments of some sort of devices that both skeletons carried on their belts, some shiny trinkets in the remains of the carried skeleton's bag, and an old portable cogitator in the other's bag. Okay, so examine the broken device. The pieces of broken text suggest that this was a rudimentary radar jammer, radar jammer an item commonly utilized by pirates in the Cronus Expanse. Examine the trinkets. The trinkets are clearly of Zeno's origin. They are miscellaneous, time-worn items that have no particular value. One can assume that they are petty trophies looted from several corpses. And let's try to extract the data from the cogitator. God. The cogitator has been exposed to the elements for decades or even centuries. It is a small miracle that you are able to extract a fragment of a Vox recording. Apparently, the last communications. Scout 1. We're rich! Chaos take me rich! Look out. Fly for crying out loud, spit it out! What have you found? Rich! Screw footfall, the expense can go to the orcs! We're <laughs> I love the orcs. We're out of here, Calixis, here we come. Yeah, because with our record, Calixis is definitely the place to go. What makes you think life's better there anyway? I want a house on some planet, a mansion, with a lion statue on the enter at the entrance. It'll have a servitor with one job, dusting my lion statue. Fly, you idiot. You're still on a dangerous planet. Quit sending me your hollering. Get back here or just tell me what you found already. Fly. Fly, you coming? I'm coming for you, dumbass. If you're not responding just to mess with me, you're dead meat. Well, I guess they both died. But he had something interesting. None shall stand in my We way. have a ledge with 95% athletics required to pass it. Hi. Compared to naval service, that was barely a challenge. You'll have an experience. Let me get the rest of the experience here. An expected yep. result. Experience? Nothing matters. I more. won't tolerate weakness. Oh. The skeleton is the huh? The skeleton in decayed tech priest robes is missing its right leg. Judging by what remains of the bones, the leg was hacked off. It seems the person was still alive when it happened, and they reached this spot by crawling rather than walking. And now we have a tech use test. Wait, 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 wait. Let me just confirm this. Tech use. Uh, I don't think I have anything else that gives me tech use, right? I have this. 
Man, we have 110 and it's still only 60% chance. Jesus. What a shameful failure. The motionless servo skull shows no sign of damage. Looked like it, was, it hovered next to its dead master until its battery ran down. I am sad. Can I try again? <laughs> no, it just it's failed. Okay. Examine the transmitter. Grace and strength of will. It is sad that such gifts have fallen to one whose soul will never be illuminated by the light of terror. Hmm. Okay. A new challenge for me. This smells to me like ambush. Is what this smells to me. Lord Zenos. My knowledge has its limits. We are not... Oh. It was difficult. Negative 50% chance? Ah, oh, damn. It is impossible to determine to whom these bones belong just by looking. It's about time. This would have been a good place to bring Gilead. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know what? I think I'm going to leave the examination of this transmitter for the next episode. Because I feel like something is going to happen here. Everything seems kind of set up for that. <laughs> So we're going to see this one fresh in the next, uh, the next episode. So, as always, my friends, this will be it for this episode. I want to thank you all for being here with me on the channel, watching some Rogue Trader. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing for more. Many more videos coming out soon. And it's also a free and easy way to support the channel. I hope to see you all in the next episode. And until then, stay safe, everyone.